Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. It is Thursday, and it is the 30th and next to last day of January. We'll end the first month of 2020 tomorrow as we end this work week for most everyone. And then, of course, it's on to a February weekend that's much more like April or so weather-wise. We're still looking at temperatures into the 50s and 60s. Paying for that warmth with some rain. No weather in, no winter weather in sight or store as of now, but I suspect it's going to make a return, but not in your seven day. We'll have that in just a few moments. We'll also talk about uh, the Kentucky release now of the six year road plan, of course, for the state as it pertains to McGoffin County and the significant road improvement projects that are slated for uh, or during the next six years. Some multi million dollar and very significant, some, uh, some guardrail installation projects and of course highlights from last night's hornet and tiger matchup as it was to paintsville we went last evening we'll take a look at district standings as well as well and records and much more and a few other things whatever i can squeeze into what's now left of the half hour did you get a sagisville independent today among other things we of course had our feature on tom whitaker and his passing and his art and it was a, a story that we're very proud to do one of course we're so saddened to have to do but we hope you pick up a paper and as well take a look at our historical page where it was back to 1997 we went uh, brought to you weekly by grover on his attorney at law with that said headlines tonight begin with something else from the state unemployment rates which rose in 56 kentucky counties between december of 18 and this past december they fell in 46 counties and stayed the same in 18, according to statistics. Oldham County recorded the lowest jobless rate in the Commonwealth, as it quite often does, at 2.7, followed by Fayette and Shelby and Woodford uh, and other such cities. McGoffin County, again, recorded the state's highest unemployment rate at 13.8%, followed by Harlan at 10.8, Leslie at 9.9, Breathitt and Carter counties a little farther on up the list at 8. Point two. Kentucky's county unemployment rates and employment levels are not seasonally adjusted because of small sample sizes. Employment statistics undergo sharp fluctuations due to several or seasonal seasonal events such as weather changes, harvests, holidays, school openings, and uh, the like, they say. Also from the state, the six-year road plan has been released. This plan provides $80 million a year in state and federal funding to address the backlog of deficient bridges, it also provides $80 million to $125 million a year, supplemented as necessary with the annual KYTC resurfacing program dollars to address the backlog of pavement needs on Kentucky's highway system, and it also allows for some other funding. The 2020 recommended highway plan is based on a total of $6.1 billion in available funding, and the funding consists of about $1.1 billion to address the backlog of pavement and bridge needs. The six-year plan contains six projects slated for McGoffin County, as they always stress upon releasing these six-year plans. Just because it's in the six-year plan doesn't always mean it will begin or be completed in that six-year time frame, but it is a schedule for them to go by. We have six projects as were listed, some including the multi-million dollar reconstruction, if you will, of the Ivy Point Hill on West Maple Street, West or on 460, as well as to continuing the four lane all the way to the McGoffin Floyd County line. We'll start with next year and the only project slated for next year, and that is a $63,000 guardrail installation project on Route 40 for a length of three tenths of a mile from mile marker 2.2 to 2.5, roughly, again, at a cost of $63,000. From there, the next project is slated to begin in 2023 and take a period of two years, according to estimates, to be completed. And that's nearly a $10 million project, one that's been studied and been in the planning stages for some time, and that is to improve the Ivy Point Hill west of Sagersville, a basic reconstruction, eliminating that particular stretch of the curvy Ivy Point Hill. Once again, set to begin in 2023, last two years, and cost a little more than $9.5 million. The next project is set to begin in 2024. That's another guardrail installation project, $60,000, to install guardrail about three-tenths of a mile on Gun Creek, Route 867. In 2025, a $3.2 million project is set to begin, that on the Mountain Parkway, that to extend the four-lane from the 114-460 intersection where the new four-laning project currently ends there at the end of Restaurant Row, but to extend that four-lane from there 
to the Floyd McGoffin County line. An estimated $3.2 million for that project, once again slated for 2025. In 2026, a nearly $3.5 million project is in the six year plan. This to make the improvements that we've covered in the downtown area on Route 40, almost from the red light right here in front of the Sagersville Independent and Your News Today studio and offices, and then going on Route 40 towards Paintsville, past City Hall, and a bit further. A road widening bike and pedestrian trail installation project that will also improve drainage. That's a $3.4 million project that is set to begin in 2026. And the sixth project on the six year plan is another guardrail installation project set for 2026. That a little more than a tenth of a mile on Mine Fork from mile marker 8.5 to 8.67. That project estimated at $26,000. Has Logan Corporation got a deal for you? So the next time you need one, you have one. The fact is that Logan is manufacturing so many dump bodies that they're closing out forever their stock on brand new Honda generators and water pumps. They've got over 50 brand new units in the box with the factory warranty on sale right now at prices you can't find anywhere. Two inch pumps, three and four hundred dollars off. Three inch pumps, four inch water pumps, trash pumps, Honda generators, the quiet portable EU series and the 1000 and 2000 watt models, hundreds of dollars off. You can get an EU 1000 25 pound generator for $642. Save almost a thousand on their big EB 6500 generator with many more models available, all at prices lower than anywhere you're going to find online or elsewhere. Guaranteed at Logan Corporation while they last. Right now, for pennies on the dollar, a huge selection of like new laptop computers, a fresh stock of video games, the Cadillac of dog tracking and training systems, new hunting rifles, accessories, and ammo. And they always stock, buy, sell, and pawn gold and silver coins and jewelry with a new selection just in at Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville, 349 Pawn. Appalachian Wireless wants to know if you're tired of settling. Settling for a phone you didn't really want because it was more about the cost of the device rather than the phone you really wanted. Well, Appalachian Wireless has the solution, and it's called the Appalachian Advantage. With Advantage, every phone model is back on the table because you only have to pay the taxes on the device you really want. Many of our hottest smartphones are less than $50 up front, then a few extra dollars on your monthly bill. With Appalachian Advantage. Payment agreement is required. See store for complete details. We have finally done it. After years and years of extensive testing, we not only invented the chicken sandwich, we have perfected the chicken sandwich. Come and try it and love it with a big, famous dip, breast strip, pickles and mayonnaise, or however you like it fixed. And if you like, make it a double. Just make your way to Lee's to get it and grab a cookie while you're there. At your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where even our ice is famous. You know what's just around the corner? Valentine's Day, and for a very limited time, while they're getting ready for Valentine's Day, you can come in and get 50%, that's half off select home decor and 50% off women's winter clothing at Frazier's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. It's a must-see sale at the Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville for a limited time. Half off women's winter clothing and home decor while it lasts. The Seasonal Shop. Come by or call 349-3223. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, Call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. 
I've got some other news we've been working on today, some other interviews, just not ready as of airtime. Keep in mind, though, and there was a little bit of a surprise for everyone, and I missed it. I caught the very end of it, but of course, the local family, the Ward family, on tonight's edition of the Family Feud. I know that there were different times we had those on for you last night. It's on uh, Foothills, I know, at 7.30 this evening on 188 and 189. It was on at 5.30 on uh, Howard's Cable, and again, on uh, the CWWKYT network on Howard's Cable at 7.30. 30 as well so we're going to maybe be talking with a few of the wards about their experience with steve harvey uh and uh, the fun they had on the family feud maybe as soon as tomorrow we'll see how that goes here's tonight's community calendar though before i go any further and his birthday does start off tonight's mcgolfin farm bureau community calendar and it's to james a happy 65th birthday to james david reisner from the wife and the family and the son-in-law and the daughter-in-law and Everyone else, James, happy birthday to you. Happy 65th birthday to James David Reisner. They hope you've had the best. Just a reminder, revival ongoing nightly right now at 7 at the Sagersville Pentecostal Church of Christ on East Maple Street. Come and be blessed nightly at 7. And that's it for still a brief community calendar. Um, just to say on top of all that, that when you have something you want in a calendar, it's free. You just have to tell me so I can tell everyone else. As always, nightly obituaries as we move on are brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And we've learned tonight that 79-year-old May Line Helton of Royalton Road will be laid to rest following services that begin in the morning at 11. May passed away on the 28th, married to Rainey Bud Helton, who preceded her in death while she survived by sons Gerald Anthony and Jeffrey Wayne Helton. Visitation is tonight, and services begin once again tomorrow morning at 11 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And 70-year-old Barry Owens of Royalton passed away on the 29th yesterday, survived by his wife Shirley, as well as daughters Melissa Fox and Misty Lou Vanderkay and Jennifer K. Miller. Visitation is after 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, and services in Barry's honor are going to start Saturday afternoon at 1 from the Salyersville Funeral Home, and burial will follow afterwards at the Bluegrass Cemetery here in Salyersville. 85-year-old Fayetta Bailey of Deporter Road passed away on January the 29th. She survived by sons Barry Leo and Tony Chris Minix. Visitation is going to be a tomorrow evening after 5, all day Saturday, and services will begin Sunday at 2. Services from the Tip Top United Baptist Church. It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with Flavor-X. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great, and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering. There's and yours for free and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Salyersville. Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply, the region's largest inventory and lowest prices on feed for pets and livestock. And now they have Bernie. Gear so warm you'll think it's summer. Shirts and outerwear, overalls and more. For gentlemen and ladies. And Tomahawk always has the best prices on pickup and delivery of gravel and rock that's dense grade all the way up to big class 3 and drain pipe 4 inches all the way up to 72 inches. Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply in Sagersville at red light number 4. Don't drive or let your family drive in this or this before doing this, stopping at Conley Tire in Staffordsville for brakes, oil, alignment, and of course, tires. Thousands of tires in stock every day to fit anything with six months no interest financing and over 33 years of quality service with a smile. Conley Tire in Staffordsville. I'm Dr. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH the healthcare system of Appalachia. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. 
real and real competitive hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4x4 or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. At work we do a lot of live shows with crowds. I used to sit up there and not really know who was looking at me. I was finally tired of contacts and glasses, tired of paying for contacts, and I just decided I need to get these eyes fixed. Able Eyes was great. If someone asked me if they should get LASIK, I would absolutely recommend it. At first, like many people, I'm hesitant, but after going to Able Eyes and they walk me through it, I know that it's a quick and painless process, and I recommend going to Able Eyes. They were the best. Right now, you can take advantage of their lowest prices of the year at $1,800 per eye. Well, with the beginning of February, of course, comes the end of the high school basketball schedule and calendar. And with the district tournament quickly approaching in early February to be held at Martin County for the 57th district this year. District games are starting to heat up and pick up. And last night, it was McGoffin County traveling to Paintsville for just such action. Uh, when I got there, the Lady Hornets were winding down. The game stayed pretty tight from what I understand for the Lady Hornets and Lady Tigers pretty early on. Uh, and then later, a little after or a little bit before I got there. Paintsville, I believe, was ahead 8 at 25-17 early in the third quarter uh, and then outscored from there on. McGoffin County 11 to nothing for a final score of 36-17. We'll go over that in more detail uh, and give you district standings in just a few seconds. But from there, it was on to the boys, uh, where from the tip, we knew, regardless of the outcome, it was going to be entertaining. And, of course, there are some big highlights to come out of last night's game. The Paintsville Tigers score off the tip, and then McGoffin County with Isaiah Salyer for three. And Patrick Dameron fighting inside for two, run it up to seven on Paintsville. That's before Braxton Tharp and Colby Fugit, who did most of his work from three-point range, but not this time, take back the early lead. And then the Tigers started to add to it as the first quarter ticks down, but the shot of the night, perhaps the shot of the season, pulls the Hornets to within four. And here it is. Lucas Literal gets the inbound to Isaiah Salyer, who takes six steps to just pass the half-court line and with four-tenths of a second left in the first quarter, releases the long ball for a monster three-pointer, giving McGoffin County some momentum, 16-12, to going into the second quarter. But from there, the Tigers outscored McGoffin County 25 to 12 in the second quarter. And here we are at the 330 mark in the third quarter. And another Fugit three equals a 27 point Tiger lead and what looks like no hope for the Hornets. With the Tigers still up by 23 at the start of the fourth quarter, up 20 at five minutes to play and still up 17 at the three minute mark with McGoffin County cutting it down to 14 with a minute and a half to go and all the way down to nine from a 27 point deficit. But it's the Tigers 84 to 73 in this district matchup. So with that loss, the McGoffin County Hornets fall to close to even at 11 and 10 on the season, but still ahead of the game by one. That also puts them still winless in district Play, zero wins and four losses, two more district games left. That also puts the boys hosting Floyd Central this Saturday. Now that was set to be a doubleheader for the girls and boys, I believe still is. From what I understand, we'll of course check in with school being out and all the sickness and illness. We'll, we'll uh, make sure of that before I leave you for tomorrow evening. But right now the boys once again 11 and 10 and set to host Floyd Central on Saturday, which was also set to be senior night here in McGoffin County. For the Lady Hornets, as I said just a few seconds ago, they fell to Paintsville as well last night in their district matchup. Final score was 17-36. That puts the boys tomorrow night hosting the ladies from Martin County before the doubleheader with the boys on Saturday here at home. That's two home games in a row, tomorrow night and Saturday for the McGoffin County Lady Hornets, who are right now 2-16. They're also 0-4 in 
district play. Once again, hosting Betsy Lane tomorrow night at 7.30. Now, switching gears and going over to Coach Sloan and his Tigers. We know that he won last night over McGoffin County. The final score, 84-73 to last night. That puts the Paintsville Tigers at 11-9 and right now. Most importantly, though, undefeated in district district play the 57th district they have got a 4 and 0 record thus far with two more games left to go Paintsville rolling in the 57th after their win over McGoffin County last night 84 to 73 their next district game is their next game where they're at across town Johnson Central this Saturday tip off set for 7:30 for the Tigers against the Golden Eagles at Central now going on over to Lady Tiger basketball they, of course, won over McGoffin County last night, 36-17, as I said, the final score. That puts the Lady Tigers at 8-14. and 14. Right now, they've got two wins in the 57th and three losses in the 57th. They are at Prestonsburg this coming Tuesday night, tip-off set for 7-30. Their next home game will be next week on the 6th, hosting Fairview. And last but not least tonight, the Johnson Central Golden Eagles is where we'll go. And they, on Monday night, as I told you earlier in the week, had a loss to Martin County by 10, 57 to 67. And that dropped the boys for the first time, maybe this season, uh, definitely for a long time, down to the third rung in 15th region basketball standings at 13 and 8. They now trail Lawrence County, who is uh, number two at 14 and 8, and Shelby Valley, who is the first in 15th region standings at 15 and 5. Uh, the Golden Eagles once again 13 and 8, and they are hosting Paintsville, like I said, Saturday. And that leaves the Lady Eagles 51 to 16 uh, against. East Ridge, last night I believe that was, puts the Lady Eagles at 10 and 12, 2 and 1 in the district, hosting Martin County, Monday night, 7.30. With that, your weather forecast, the all-important weather forecast. We've been kind of talking about the warm air and the rain for days. We still are 50s and 60s for more than one day in a row, maybe even as much as three or so. Uh, there's no winter weather in your forecast, but don't let that fool you. It is going to make a return to some degree. So here's how your Licking Valley RECC outlook shakes down. Tonight, cloudy skies and a low of 34. Just a cloudy Thursday. Remember, the Sagers Independent came out today, and among a whole lot of other news that you're only going to see and read there, you'll also find quite a bit on the passing of Tom Whitaker and his life and his art uh, dotted throughout the, the Sagers Independent. We hope you pick one up and uh, give it a read when you can. Back to the weather, a 34-degree low tonight. Calm winds and cloudy skies will be followed by about a 50-51 degree Friday tomorrow. But with the warmer air, we're going to see some shower chances. Maybe some slight sprinkles and flurries first thing in the morning. But then, of course, as we are on our way to 51, we'll see some scattered showers to the tune of about 40% throughout the afternoon and early evening or so with cloudy skies to continue. Uh, nothing dramatic, just some scattered showers and a few clouds. And like I said, 51 and 39 for your high and low. Saturday, about a 30% chance of those showers, mainly between 7 in the morning and about 4 or so, and a bit cooler. That system puts us down into the mid-40s for your Saturday. Winds out of the west as well uh, will be noticeable, anywhere from 3 to 6 on average, maybe 18 miles per hour, uh, even into Saturday night. But the good news is sunny, partly sunny and becoming all sunny. Sunny and 55 degrees on your Sunday. It's going to be a really nice latter half to your weekend with 38 degrees under mostly clear skies Sunday night. And if you like the 50s, you're going to like the 60s. 63 and partly sunny Monday and still dry. Now the next shower chances do come into town Monday night. We're talking after midnight, 1 in the a.m. And we'll see 49 degrees for lows and a 50% chance of rain starting around midnight or so Monday night. That rain will be likely, and it will continue throughout your Tuesday, not looking for a major rain maker out of this. Maybe a quarter of an inch, I think, on average for a lot of folks. 60% uh, chance thereof as well. 60 degrees, though, still on your Tuesday with rain likely. 47 that night, rain still likely. Rain still likely Wednesday, still holding on to the mid-50s. Mostly cloudy, 35 that night, and a 50% chance of rain. Thursday, mostly cloudy, 48, and a 40% chance of rain. And no big winter weather on tap right now or in the forecast to mention we're keeping our eye on the possible return well that's it look for if all things go as planned uh, hearing from the wards about their experience on the family feud which you can see tonight and a host of other news that we're working on to try to have under wraps for you before we leave you for the weekend good night and thank you for watching